teach we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Pleasant good night. Our topic tonight is facing loneliness in your city. Loneliness in cities is a growing issue worldwide. With the urbanization trend and changes in family dynamics, many people feel a deep sense of loneliness. In recent decades, the urban population has surged. In 2020, according to the UN, over 55% of the world's population lives in cities. This trend is expected to even continue. Ironically, despite the density of people in cities, a significant portion of the population experiences what we call loneliness. A survey by the American Red Cross found that over 20% of adults in the United States often or always feel lonely. Let us pray. Kind and ever loving Father, Dear Jesus, we come before you, giving you thanks and praise for being a mighty God. Dear Lord, as we are about to uh, dive into this message, dear Father, Lord, I pray that your spirit will touch hearts and minds, those listening, those viewing, the Father. Continue to walk in our lives, dear Lord, and to let us know that you're there whenever we're lonely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Loneliness is not evenly distributed and affects certain groups more profoundly. The elderly, for instance, newcomers to cities, 
in search of opportunities, workaholics, and those with demanding jobs often bear the brunt of those of this loneliness. Loneliness is not merely physical isolation. It's also feeling disconnected and isolated from others, which can lead to serious issues like depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem. Now, the, the problem of loneliness. Loneliness is something we've all experienced at some point in life, haven't we? It's that sinking feeling in your stomach when someone you care about is far away, or when you believe that no one cares about you. But it's essential to understand that being lonely is not the same as feeling lonely. Sometimes, being lonely or being alone is perfectly fine. Even Jesus himself would retreat to quiet places to pray or to spend time with his friends. Some people spend a lot of time alone, but it doesn't feel lonely. For example, a scientist engrossed in research or an artist creating a masterpiece can be alone but not feel lonely. Being alone is more than a physical state. Like when you choose to be alone for a while, but feeling lonely is emotional. It's when you feel disconnected, isolated, or lacking a meaningful connection with someone else. Sometimes being alone can be good, such as when you need to think or when you need to pray in silence. Loneliness, on the other hand, usually feels bad. It can follow sad events like a loss of a loved one, divorce, severe illness, or problems like unemployment. We may all experience loneliness at some point in life because we all need relationships with other people. And sometimes uh, those relationships get damaged or fail. When we feel alone after a painful experience, that's when we truly need the support of someone we can trust. And here comes the remedy for loneliness. The issue of loneliness is repeatedly addressed in the Bible. Uh, did you know that the word alone appears around 118 times in the Bible? But it rarely means feeling lonely. Here's another fascinating fact. The word loneliness didn't even have the current meaning until recently. In this century, it didn't appear in any major dictionary until after World War II. In other words, the concept of feeling lonely is a mental state that is relatively new. When we read the Bible, we find a crucial point in the beginning. God never intended for humans to live alone. After God created the world in seven days, it says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. But there was one thing that God didn't find good. And the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. If we pay attention to Genesis 1 account, we notice that animals were created in groups. Birds, fish, and animals. But the human was created alone. However, it wasn't God's plan for us to live that way forever. God knew that loneliness was not good for us, so he decided to create a suitable companion. Thus, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible tells us that God created woman from man's rib. Then God blessed them and gave them a command. Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. As you see, loneliness was not part of God's original plan for humanity. We are social beings. We are made to commune with God and others. We are born with the innate ability to create social bonds. With social bonds with our creator and fellow humans, they are essential for our survival. But sin disrupted the path. And now we feel lonely and disconnected from God and others. 
So when we talk about loneliness, we need to understand that its effects on us is on two significant levels. First, spiritually. The initial level of loneliness, people experience spiritual loneliness. As mentioned earlier, God created us for relationship with him. But unfortunately, many people live estranged from God and feel spiritually lonely. And that's why, despite being surrounded by people and having everything they want, they still feel lonely. They don't realize that neither money nor possessions can fill that void in their lives. Spiritual loneliness can only be filled through personal connection with God. When we have a relationship with God, you can, physical, you can be physically alone but, feel, but not feel lonely. I will take that again. When you have a relationship with God, you can be physically alone but not be lonely. Consider the case of Job. <clears throat> Sorry. Consider the case of Joseph. He was sold as a slave, separated from his family and friends, taken to an unfamiliar place where he didn't even speak the language, nor understood the customs. In short, he was alone, in human sense. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered. Even though he was alone, he was not lonely. Likewise, Jesus in the final days of his earthly life was abandoned by his friends. Like Joseph, he was sold for a price. Almost everyone who had followed him left. At one point, Jesus said, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. What a harsh reality, isn't it? But he also said, But a time is coming, or has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. Then there's the Apostle Paul, who, in a time of need, also found himself alone. He said, At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. Imagine how this champion of truth felt. The one who founded so many churches, preached to so many people, and taught many, many things to them. In his darkest hour, he felt alone. But he could write, But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. Although physically alone, he was never lonely. Like Joseph, Jesus, and Paul, you too can have a special relationship with God. You can live and walk every day in his presence. If you have a relationship with God, you can enjoy his company in such a way that even when you find yourself alone in a situation, you can never feel lonely. Secondly, loneliness is related to human relationships. As we call it, relational loneliness, despite Adam's initial having a perfect relationship with God, he still felt the need to, for a companionship with other human beings. God didn't ignore or minimize that need. Instead, he made someone to fulfill it. God knows that as human beings, we need companionship. Loneliness is like a warning signal. Just as hunger tells you, tells you that you need food, loneliness tells you that you need companionship. Relational loneliness is only cured when we build solid relationships with others. And, no, and you know what? There's a place where you can do that. Of course. You can do that within our family. Or within your family. At work. At school. In support groups. But one of the best ways is within church. Let me explain something before we continue. When the Bible talks about the church, it doesn't refer to a building, but a group of believers who have been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So, 
When we examine what the Bible says about the church in the New Testament, we notice that it's about a community of Christians who care for each other, love each other, host each other, welcome each other, serve each other, teach each other, forgive each other, support each other, and help each other in many, many ways. In short, they are a team that's always there for one another. So in conclusion, God doesn't want you to feel lonely. You can connect with him and others and thus never feel lonely. During one of our gatherings, a young woman who has been struggling with depression and anxiety for years walked in. She had very few friends and spent most of her time alone in our apartment. She hardly went out, only for work or to the nearest store to buy essentials. When she said life was a senseless maze, the loneliness and loneliness was a constant companion. It's a sad way to live. But one day, through a co-worker, she received an invitation to attend one of her church services. Won't you say amen? At first, she made excuses repeatedly. But her friend insisted so much that she finally said, Well, I'll go just this once to give it a try. So she came to church one Saturday and spent almost the entire day with us. She shared a delicious lunch, and in the afternoon, she went out with a group from the church of church members to provide food for those in need. According to her, that day was something special. It has been years since she felt so welcomed anywhere. The next week, she decided to come back. The young people invited her to a social gathering at one of their homes, and she accepted. What she witnessed surprised her. People were enjoying life in a healthy way without the need of alcohol or drugs. She believed. She couldn't believe it. <clears throat> she felt accepted and valued. Furthermore, she began receiving weekly text messages with inspirational Bible verses. A group of girls including her in a special prayer. Literally, in no time, she had no time to feel lonely. Six months after her first visit, she decided to be baptized. Before her baptism, she shared her testimony and said that the love she had received from the church, children, young people, and adults helped her overcome loneliness. Today, she is completely free and has left behind her smoking, drinking habits entirely. But most importantly, she enjoys a special relationship with God and with others. So young people, I share this story today to tell you that there are many people in the cities who feel just as lonely as this young lady did before she encountered our church. They may be struggling with things like depression and anxiety, but genuine friendship can make a significant difference in their lives. The invitation is to seek out those who feel lonely. Lend a helping hand. Show them that love and joy, that love and joy that you have found in Jesus, you don't know how much impact that might have on someone's life. So are you willing, young people, to take up this challenge? Let us make our city less lonely. A place for everyone. Together, we can make a difference.
teach, we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Worship Him in all the nations, in all the 